Subject of discussion is music and a man who lives, sleeps, eats and drinks music is DJ, Irish producer and chart topper John Gibbons. It's always great to chat with you on Spin, John, and it's brilliant to have you back and to get your take on all things education. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Louise. Uh, You said sleeps music. I don't get enough of that still. (laughs) (laughs) I feel music, John, is part of your life in every single aspect. Uh, Before we chat all about it, I want to go back and talk about your Leaving Cert. I think the entire country imagines that you're the type of student who would have gotten an A1 in Leaving Cert music. Um, I didn't do Leaving Cert music, would you believe? Um, the, The school I was in, I went to school in Carlo and I did the Leaving Cert, but Music at the time, the program in the school wasn't really geared towards the type of music I was into. Um, I was more into kind of, let's put it this way, the music that was taught in school was more the classical side of things. And that's not where already at that point, like I was singing in a band, I was experimenting with DJing. I was kind of on that path, even though I didn't know I was on the path. So it didn't really appeal to me. I did it, I did it up to junior cert level, but it didn't really appeal to me as an exam subject. It felt more like a subject than the creative process that I was falling in love with you know so music has always been a huge part of me and it has kind of it ran in parallel with school like a lot of my early music musical influences certainly in DJ would have been actually through school it would have been friends of mine who bought a set of decks and allowed me to try them out that type of thing so regarding the leaving cert music wasn't a big thing for me but that didn't hold me back in music so anybody who might be looking for a career in music but isn't necessarily doing it that certainly at no point even felt like a stumbling block for me because it is such a creative industry and it's about doing what makes you feel a particular way and as long as you're feeling and enjoying and experiencing emotions through the music well that will carry you through rather than any kind of formal education that you might be looking for. There are huge upsides, obviously, to a formal education in music. And I never studied musical theory per se. And I wish I could just pick up lots of different instruments and strum away and jam. And I mean, that that's a huge advantage to people who are doing that. But I didn't have it and it certainly didn't hold me back. And again, people who, there are so many people now interested in electronic music and dance music. I'm not sure if there's kind of a focus on that regarding the Leaving Cert or whether it's catered for in the Leaving Cert or not. But I think that will start to certainly come on stream because it can't be ignored anymore. It's something that's just, it's absolutely crucial to anybody, especially in this day and age where we're kind of stuck in rooms and things, you know, and people are learning to produce themselves, even if they have learned on an instrument. So I don't have direct relationship with Leaving Cert music per se, but music was there every step of the way during my Leaving Cert. Yeah, it's so interesting that you say that, John. And it seems to be almost a reoccurring trend on the show because last week we spoke with Rachel Allen, who you'd imagine would have done home economics. She didn't study home economics in school. She didn't do it for the Leaving Cert, but she always had a passion for food. Similarly to you, you're saying the same thing with music. Can I ask, do you feel that like the music curriculum in the Irish education system almost failed you in a sense. Like you knew you were musical, but what was on offer to you in school just didn't suit your interests and maybe wasn't going to be an area of music that you would have excelled in. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, I do. Um, And I hope it's changed since. But at the time, music was kind of, it was seen as one of those subjects that like seven or eight people out of my sixth year would have been maybe 150 or 60 people. Seven or eight people did music for the Leaving Cert. Um, And it was only those who played the piano to a high standard or who could read sheet music or something like that. There was nothing whatsoever for someone like me who was interested in being in a band per se, or at the time was already dabbling in electronic music and production on computers. There was nothing like that whatsoever. Nothing for producers, nothing for somebody who might want to get into musical engineering. I mean, the music business and music industry is so wide in its breadth. But at the time, the curriculum certainly only catered for, like, I remember remember sitting in, in fourth year music class and we were told to study Peter and the Wolf. And I, I don't know who composed Peter and the Wolf. And apparently it's a big, famous piece of classical music, which I was certainly familiar with without realizing what it was. But it turned me right off. I thought, what, I mean, I'm going to sit and do this for two years. This is nothing to do with my interest in music. And for something that should have been and should be for all people, a creative industry, by and large, I didn't see any, any kind of shred of creativity within the curriculum. So I would say it failed me. And people should be able to do what it is they want within the system to a large degree. I was by no means an isolated case. Like, I mean, any of my friends and peers in school would have had similar stories. There were certain things they just couldn't do within the curriculum that then stimmied 
the direction they wanted to go. It didn't for me because ultimately I was kind of driven and I, I just ended up doing what I wanted to do anyway. But it does put a lot of people off permanently. And I think any kind of discouragement at a school level from people following their passion is to be steered and veered way, way, way away from yeah. Yeah. You're so Just right, John. And no, and it's a great opinion. And it seems to be the popular opinion because every week in this show, we chat with Leaving Cert students and there is a call for reform. You know, students want a more practical Leaving Cert experience and not necessarily a Leaving Cert that depends on, you know, one written exam in June after six years mm. of schooling. Like perhaps it could be something like music that you improve on all the time and you work away at. Um, so I think I want to ask then what happened for you after your Leaving Cert? Uh, no, what I, what I did in third level, believe it or not, was history and politics. And I did it with a view to taking the bar exam and becoming a barrister. Um, interestingly, the advice I was given, why not do law? Why do history and politics instead? Which came from two barristers in the family uh, was to not pigeonhole myself. And they said, do a broad kind of general arts degree um, that might have some sort of focus on the English language. So again, the history and politics, it's essay writing. Um, in, in college. So they said, just don't pigeonhole yourself uh, because law requires you to think on your feet and be in a way creative with language. So they actually recommended to not put myself in that box and to remain outside the box, if you like. However, in college, I was DJing full time. Um, it was my way of paying for college. And I knew pretty quickly, I mean, it was late nights. It was being in that nightclub environment all the time. It was very difficult to get up for lectures per se. Now, luckily, I wasn't very, it wasn't very lecture intense, uh, the course I was doing. And I actually used to pick subjects in third year based on the times that the, <laughs> that the lectures were held as late as possible. But uh, yeah, a couple of years in, I knew that I was going to stick with music. Uh, so I finished the degree and decided to give it two years and see, could I continue to earn a living long term and, and turn it into a career as opposed to a way of making money for a specific purpose, you know? And I just never looked back. I just found that the more, the more I followed my gut, now I didn't ignore my head along the way, but the more I followed my gut and tried to get it in harmony with what was going on up here, the more the doors just started to open. I, I, I kind of had to just trust in what I was doing, trust in the creative process. And if something felt right, I went for it. If something didn't feel right, I learned this the hard way. Well, then I steered clear of it. So I really think that for all the kind of constructive academic advice we receive ultimately we have to find something that we're happy doing because I could have gone down the path of law and probably made a hell of a lot more money than I make now and look in one sense that'd be great but I know I'd be absolutely miserable in that environment it just it's not for me it's for a lot of people it's just not for me what I do is not for a lot of other people and I mean I, I wouldn't trade all the money in the world for happiness. Do you know what I mean? I, I would much rather be happy doing what I'm yeah. doing. And a lot of people have said to me, even during the past 12 months, you can't do gigs anymore. You're not earning the same income. Maybe you should look at doing something else. Well, look, if something that I love as much as this comes along, well, then maybe I will. But I love going into the studio every day. I love having chats like this about what I do. I'm passionate about it. Why would I trade that for something that might make me more money? Look, follow your heart is really what I'm saying. Be sensible about following your heart and try and get it kind of working in tandem, head and heart. You know, that's what I always say, head and heart. If you can get those working together and it's not easy and I fail every day of the week and I just pick myself back up and keep going, but ultimately do what makes you happy because we only get one shot at this. You know, what's the point being miserable and having a big bank account that won't stand to anything at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, you're you're so right. John. And I think it's that age old saying it comes up every week. You know, if you do something you love, it doesn't feel like work. You never work a day in your life and all of these things. But I'd imagine there must have been an influence somewhere in your life telling you that DJing is great and producing music is great, but it's not a job job. Go to college and get a real life degree and go and get a real life career. And I'm saying all of these with inverted commas because I think a lot there is a, still a stigma in Ireland. I definitely think we've moved on as a, you know, definitely our generation are, are much more forward thinking and, you know, open to new careers, the likes of, you know, social media, influencing, blogging, all of these things. But at the same time, I still think there is this um, maybe seed planted in people's head that they need to get a degree so that they can get a job so that they can earn money and be a grown-up and I don't know if you're music allows you to do that right. <laughs> yeah like you're, you're you're so right and I still hear that to this day it just actually reminds me I have to look on Instagram this morning and 
just a comment I had, I had expressed, semi-expressed an opinion, um, how dare I, on Instagram. And there was just a comment this morning, you know, I'll stick to twiddling knobs and pushing buttons type thing, um, which I just thought was interesting because you do come up against that all the time. You know, if you're not treading the conventional path per se, there is this perception that it's not a real job. What, you're following your passion, but you're going to have to go and face the real world at some point. Well, for me, this is the real world because I firmly believe we create our own real world, if that makes sense. And we're responsible for our own happiness. And, you know, there are many challenges on the way. There are easier paths. I mean, a conventional path may have been easier in terms of not having as many challenges, but that's, I think, what makes me and helps me grow as a person. And I think the day we start, stop growing and stop learning and shy away from challenges is the day that we stagnate as people. And I think we have to look at what makes, I keep coming back to this, what makes us happy in our lives. And I had lots of people, friends, relatives, the whole way up, still to this day, well, still doing the music, yeah? You know, that that's the thing that I hear all the time. Even when I was doing radio, it was still, oh, are you going to keep doing the radio now? Are you going to be doing that when you're 50? And, you know, I mean... I, I would never say that to a teacher. Oh, you're still doing the teaching, are you? That, that has never gone away. What you're yeah. talking about has never gone away. I totally ignore it. And I kind of laugh at it now because each to their own and all that. But it is certainly a thing in this country for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good old fashioned Irish begrudgery, John. Where would we be without it? <laughs> Um, but, you know, it is a thing. And hopefully that is something that is like something that we can dispel for Leaving Cert students tuning in this morning, because there are going to be so many creatives that look at your career and follow you on social media and think, wow, John Gibbons has it all. He's had such a successful career as a DJ. He's worked with incredible artists. He's produced amazing music for himself and for others. How can I get to that level? How can I be where John Gibbons is? And what advice do you have for that student, John? Uh, the couple of bits of advice. Um Number one, always be professional in everything you do. One thing I've noticed, um, especially when it comes to running the label side of what I do, the music label, um, there are a huge number of people who seem to have thrown decorum, etiquette, manners, things like that out the window. So just be generally professional about what you do and be polite to people because ultimately you're going to have to do a lot of knocking on doors. You're going to have to um, lean on people a lot, especially in the initial stages. Well, that continues as well, just to try and get a leg up in whatever it is you're trying to do. So it goes a long, long way just to be nice and polite to people. Like there is a perception, certainly in the music biz business, that you have to be hard nosed. You have to be kind of um, always on your guard and just be semi-aggressive at times. And I think that there is a perception of that in business in general. And I don't think that has to be the case at all. Absolutely, people need to be resolute in what they do, in what they want. Be absolutely sure that you are going to get knockbacks. You will get 99 knockbacks for every door that opens for you. Pick yourself up and keep going if it's what you're passionate about. Do not listen to people on social media. There's a lot of good stuff on social media, of course, but surround yourself with that. We all have a block button. We all have an off button. Surround yourself with what you think helps you feel good about yourself on social media because we see so much of the opposite now. And there is an insidious side to the way social media is used. The platforms themselves are great. It depends on how we use them. So I would say, don't stay away from social media. Use it as a tool, first and foremost, to help yourself up there. And secondarily, to make contacts. Because we're in an era, an era where through social media, you can contact, and I'm making up a name here, Will I Am in the States. If, you know, I mean, you can do these type of things. Doors are opening to us that were never available in the past. So be firm, resolute in what you do. If you're passionate about it, do not listen to naysayers. Be realistic about what you're doing and what you can achieve as well. But don't listen to people who will, as we spoke about, subconsciously, or they might inadvertently drag you down or discourage you from doing what you do. If it's what you want to do, do it and go get it. There isn't a formula for this. You don't necessarily have to go and do it in college. You don't have to do it for the Leaving Cert. You don't have to be playing the piano or an instrument from the age of three. You don't have to be playing one from 33. I mean, if you look at popular music today, contemporary music, classical music, it is littered with superstars who didn't start doing what they're doing until after they'd had another career in so many cases. So do what it is that you want to do that makes you happy. The other pieces will fall into place if you're serious about it. But the biggest piece of advice I would say is be strong, 
when it comes to the courage of your convictions, stick to them. Don't worry about what other people are doing because you will get so much negativity thrown at you, especially if you start to make inroads and be successful. Just stick to your own plan because ultimately you're the only person who knows what's right for you. Hey, this, this is Spin. It is Spin. Yep, yep, yep.